All right, guys, you probably took the tutorials on YouTube and and got your uh, your vehicle set up with with uh, wheel colliders, and uh, you probably got the code written to make it move forward and turn and and get the the wheel colliders to follow your uh, wheel meshes. Yeah, so you've done all those tutorials and you've got your script set up a little like mine here and you got the max force and you got the steering force so you've gotten to that point and then you don't know where to go from there there ain't much uh, instruction on that so I was gonna make this little video to carry on from that point <clears throat> so where you want to go from there is first you go to your your vehicle which I've just got this uh, station wagon that is it's free on uh, free3dmodels.com or something free3dmodels if you search that and then you search for the station wagon you'll find it so I threw it in here I set the mass to 1000 it seems like somewhere around 2000 is more is more realistic and the lower you go the the more souped up it feels so i got it at a thousand so it'll do wheelies and stuff but not be too outrageous and with that mass you set your max torque at well it depends on how hopped up you want the car to feel you know 15 if you put it right at the same as the mass it will feel kind of normal if you make it more than the mass it'll feel souped up and faster so uh, kind of just get general settings and, and I'm just going to tell you the general way to the workflow of doing this and not really the exact numbers because uh, you gotta tweak all these little adjustments on your own to find where you need it to be but once you uh, settled on a mass uh, and you find a max torque that kind of looks right, well, I mean, you can do that later, but uh, the first thing you want to do is to hit play and get where you can see it and just pick it up and drop it and watch your suspension. So uh, while we're doing that, if we select all four wheel colliders at once, when we mess with these adjustments over here, we'll adjust all four at once. So I've got the mass of the wheel colliders all on 20. And uh, what you want to do is pick it up and drop it. Uh, not while you're on this page, though. You want to be able to pick up the whole thing. But if you want to pick up and drop it and watch the the suspension and you want to adjust your suspension distance to make it just to make it look right with the car and then you want to adjust your spring so it it looks right with the weight you know where it sits and how it bounces and and stuff so uh you know, let me get back over to here and hit play So yeah, you just want it to to look right when you do this, and you can do that by adjusting those two settings, you know. And uh, now that we got that there, we won't make that mistake again. We select them all. So you adjust your spring. That's just how how much spring there is to it, or, or how stiff it is as far as change on the suspension and I'll show you that a little bit later you want to leave all this the same for now or in the uh, default settings for now so now that uh, you adjust those until you find I did it again you adjust those until you find the right settings so the suspension looks about half right and uh, then you set your camera to have an offset I would hope you'd know how to do that by now 
So you set your camera to follow your car with an offset so you can look at it from the side. And you want just a nice flat world to, to start with. And uh, while you're looking at it from the side, you can gauge how your uh, acceleration or your your max torque and how your spring uh, your spring is adjusted. So if I accelerate, you see how the front end's lifting up. Oh wait a second, I ran right into that. But you see how the front end was lifting up. Uh, if you have too stiff of a spring, your front end will lift up easier. And if you have too soft of a spring, you won't be able to get the front end up. So you want to accelerate and hit backwards and accelerate. And see how much swing your car has when you do that. And I've got brakes set up. Uh, I'll show you how to do the brakes here in a second. But once you got brakes set up, you can slam on the brakes and see what it looks like. And if it doesn't, if it's doing too much or not enough you have to adjust your on all four of them at once you've got to adjust your uh, your spring this spring here I've got mine set at 20 and uh, that seems to work good I haven't messed with the damper the target position or none of that but just the spring and uh, and another thing I need to show you is if you go to your box colliders here. So you probably got at least one box collider, if not more. Well, this uh, this one I got right here, this body one. If I move this back further, it seems to move the, the zero point of the weight back further. So the farther I have this back, the easier it does wheelies. If I have this back edge of it further forward, it won't do wheelies. The, the weight's more forward. So, uh, And then obviously my weight's pretty high up compared to the actual car. I mean, I could lower it and get a lower center of gravity. So uh, be aware that even though you don't have nothing really connected to these box colliders they are affecting the weight distribution of your vehicle <clears throat> so uh so you gotta know that so now let's see i showed you these uh well, once you get your spring figured out and you have to have that in conjunction with your max torque you know and and how it's gonna look and you know, if you're using a ridiculous max torque, like mine, it's pretty high, really, especially for the weight, because uh, I wanted it to be able to do wheelies. But, I mean, you'd have to adjust all those separately to get it to the way you wanted, you know. And uh, All right, I'll do, do one wheelie here to, to show you the that 1,500 for a 1,000 vehicle is pretty high. So I hit the brakes, and I can, I can ride that wheelie out of there. So if I just hit the brakes, starting from a stop. Now, there's another reason why I can do wheelies like that, and that is because I didn't, the forward friction, I didn't mess with anything but the stiffness. This is like the magnitude of this I mean, this is a curve, right? A friction curve, and this is the magnitude of it. So I turn it up to 1.5, which gives me more traction and the ability to do wheelies. Now at 1, you're going to have more tire slip, and you're not going to be able to do a wheelie unless maybe you turn the max torque up real high and you get lucky or something. I don't know, but, but I had to go from 1 to 1.5 on the stiffness which is the magnitude of the slip in the forward direction to give it a little more traction to get a little more effect out of the car 
And, uh, I mean, I wouldn't go up 1.5, one, past 1. 1.5, even if you wanted to do cool stuff, because 1.5 is quite a bit, really. I can do anything I want, you know. Anything higher than that's going to be too much. And, um, so, yeah, and, and you just fiddle with those, and, and you want to just start on the forward part first don't even worry about the sideways friction get everything else going first and I'm going to show you some of the code now um, so this is my car script um, a lot of this is going to look uh, familiar to you because uh, the steering I'm sure you've seen that in the other uh, tutorials uh, that's in the fix update and then uh, I got the update with this that changes the meshes of the wheels you should know already know how to do that so for to hit the brakes we use now we you should have all this set up the same so it should look just like yours you know we got this wheel collider array of four and uh, so we just go wheel collider and then the number of the wheel collider dot brake torque equals and uh, what the tutorials show is uh, math clamp dot ABS and then the wheel collider RPM and that's supposed to be like an ABS but for my setup it's uh, a little too much it's too much really so uh, I made another variable brake adjust that I made uh, public right here and actually I've got it set at points uh, I think like point seven or something so this is overridden by what I've got on on unity but it's it's like I think it's actually point five so yeah this uh this brake formula was too much for my setup, so I just added a variable to multiply it by to change it. It's you know the percentage of brake torque, because it was like uh, well I put this debug log here, and before I did that it was like 3,000, so uh, the normal brake torque is 3,000. So by knowing that. By knowing what the normal brake torque is, using the debug.log, I was able to go, uh, if it's not excel or if it's not accelerating, or if it's accelerating is not zero, and it's uh, not topped out, to give the motor torque, uh, the readings it's getting and make sure the brake torque is at zero back to zero as you're giving it motor torque but if it if it's not accelerating is is not zero or is zero then I've got the motor torque turned back to zero and then I've got this variable engine deceleration so I, I've, I'm applying engine deceleration to the back two tires. So I've got this set up as just a rear wheel drive. And I'm applying engine deceleration on the back two tires using the brake torque thing here. And for engine decel, since I, since I seen that uh, this regular brakes were like 3,000, I started playing with some numbers and... Uh, engine decel about 400 feels good and uh, I'll show you the engine deceleration real quick so um, <clears throat> get this thing going get it going sideways don't flip over don't flip over alright so if I'm going and I let off the gas and I'm not touching nothing you can see the mile per hour dropping and it comes to a stop going let off and that's just the engine decel you can see the back tire locks up just at the end but 
but either way I mean you could make some code to get rid of that but even if I go up to a hundred and let off it, it's it locks up a little more than you'd want but I mean I'm still messing with that but you want an engine deceleration and that's why I threw that in there and I thought it it was looking pretty good but I didn't notice it locking up like that but uh what it does is I mean once you let off all the torque it just keeps on rolling you know you don't you know I didn't want to use any other physics things I thought you know an engine torque or the engine deceleration would be more realistic and it seems pretty good it's not locking up there just at the very end you can make some code to get rid of that so I got deceleration and then I got the engine braking which is like that I get going again hit the engine brake it pretty much locks up I could really turn that down even further so uh those are I'll show you this code again uh, I just got the brakes hooked to the space key and uh, the space keys on it does that if the space keys not on else if and the accelerations not zero you can't use greater than zero because then you won't have no reverse so if it's not zero and then the top speed I'm going to show you how to to put a speed limiter on there because that was kind of a pain then you give apply the the motor torque else you use the deceleration so uh, okay so for the top speed now you want to use rigid body velocity dot magnitude and see here I'm gonna flip over this page here this is for I've got the miles per hour going up here using if you look for uh, canvas text uh, if you go to create UI and text one of these will pop up and then what you do is you uh, you go to this you click on it and it already comes with this text script that's already there you can just type in whatever here and it'll show up on the screen but uh, we're gonna tap into that with our variable so uh, mile per hour. So what you do is you go to the bottom, add component, and you add your own script. So here's my own script I added. And you put two public things here. You put a public uh, wheel collider, which just leaves an open box here. And you put a, a public rigid body, which leaves an open box here. So we do that by doing, oh yeah, when you do the UI, you have to put this up at top, the dot e UI. So I put public text, and I gave it a name, and public rigid body, I gave it a name. And then I just, uh, for the text, to connect the text to it, I just click on text and drag it in but for the rigid body it's not close enough to drag it in and uh, but we need the parameters from the rigid body to get the speed so you go to your main car find the rigid body put your pointer over top of it and right click and copy component and then you can go back to to your uh, text thing here and this empty box here and you should be able to right click and paste it I believe 
So uh, let me let me actually do it. Make sure I'm telling you it right. So right click, copy component, uh, text. Right click. Nah, that's not what the. Maybe it's because it's already in there, but yeah, that's all I had to do was copy component, and then I could get it into this box here. So uh, I, it don't seem like it's let me because there's already something in there. But you should be able to figure that out. Um, so now that we got access to the rigid body and we got access to putting text in that block there, then uh, you got to use a variable, mile per hour, or actually what they tell you to do is this one here, which is rigid dot velocity dot magnitude times 2.237. And they say that's what's supposed to equal miles per hour. But I've been playing around with this, and and I really felt like that was a s too slow of a number for how fast it seemed like I was going. So I just doubled it pretty much, and that feels a little more accurate to me. I mean, I'm just playing with the numbers, you know. And the weird thing is, is uh, this is a float. This is a a float, which is a or not a float. This is a double, which is like a float only with more decimal places. And it's kind of weird to deal with this, the output of this uh, thing here. So uh, I used variable on on the on the text part. I was able to use variable and get it, and then I, I take the miles per hour and I convert it into an integer and into a a different uh, variable integer here. Before I go to text and then uh then i take that integer to string to put in the text that shows up up here so i mean that's kind of a weird thing you gotta you gotta take the output of this and put it into a variable and then you gotta put it into a different variable or you're gonna have problems it's really weird like that and i'll show you why if you go to your actual car controller and i was and I was setting the top speed, you know, like a speed limiter. So uh, on this one, instead of just using ver miles per hour and doing the same thing here to get the the miles per hour, I used a double. So private double miles per hour, and then I put it in. I put this into the into the double, and then I was able to do stuff with this double but the the output of this has to go into a variable and then change to a different variable before you can use it in an if statement so down here I got else if and then top speed equals false because I you know if if the mile per hour is over the top speed I wanted 100 mile an hour then and I just make this bool true else it's false so uh, but if you were to take this mile per hour variable here this double or a variable if you use the double or the VAR either way if you take this right here and try to use it in an if statement directly it will not work it won't show an error or nothing it just will not work what you got to do is to take that and then you've got to change it to another variable before you can actually use that variable and it, and then it will work in an if statement so it's you got to have a another degree of separation here to actually use this in an if statement it's really weird and took me a wa long time to figure out so uh but now because of that this gives me a uh, top speed of 100 and once it reaches 100 it will stop applying torque it'll take all the torque away and it'll add some engine deceleration until it gets under 100 and then if you're hitting the w key it's moving again so uh so yeah, that's a little tricky. Uh, you got to have a degree of separation from this variable, even 
if you use double or the VAR, either way, I tried them both, and you cannot then take this and use it in an if statement directly. You have to convert it into another variable of some to of some type. I don't know if if statements can't handle. Well, it you know it's a double here, and this if statement can handle it. But I don't know if you're having problems with it. Try adding a degree of separation I finally did this and it actually worked I was actually trying to put it into here as greater than and and then I had my top speed number and and I just it looked like it was gonna work there was no errors but it just didn't work at all so all right and uh, what else am I gonna show you all okay well we got the brakes figured out and adjustable We've got some engine deceleration, turning our torque off when we're not accelerating. Um, we've got our speed limiter, and um, we've got our text of the miles per hour. I also have one for RPMs, but I didn't find that a useful number. When you may, when you actually get your R when you actually get your miles per hour done or your speed done then you can you know judge things better on how they're working so it's it's better if you do that in the beginning and uh, and then you really just play with these uh, wheel colliders and uh, your uh, traction here and with your max torque and all that and uh, your spring rates and and you can get this thing going forward and backwards good then you then you can move to your sideways friction and 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 maybe maybe adjust the stiffness or I wouldn't play with it too much I mean it really depends on how complex of a game you're making if you're making like a simulator or something but for me, I'm going to, you know, put some guns on the station wagon and shoot other vehicles. So, uh, I'm going to turn it, yep, I wrecked already, but I'm going to turn it down. Turn the max force down, max, or I mean the max torque down. See, I'm limited at 100 mile an hour, and it's not glitchy. I tried a couple other ways, and once it got there, it was a little too much but using the deceler engine deceleration was way better than trying to use the full-on brakes because then it would get glitchy but this thing's taking off <laughs> so okay now you know that yeah that kind of looks bad but i've got stuff turned up so much here i turn that up or turn that down max torque down I'm gonna turn this up to more realistic somewhere around 2000 is realistic I believe I was looking at some of the formulas and stuff and that's it just seems like somewhere around 2000 is pretty close to realistic um, I'm not sure how this force is calculated I don't think you like take an engine torque number and can put it in there and it'll be right so now uh, I've got more realistic stuff going on it's still pulling the front end a little bit I mean that might be too much torque still hit the brakes you know the brakes are a little too hard yet You know, and if I turn the uh, the tire slip up or back down to the default settings, and it wouldn't take off as fast. And oh, there's just more slip, more slide, and you know, so you're gonna have to play with that. Uh, like I said, the best settings for that. Are between about one and one and a half are the best uh, settings for the stiff on your forward friction so uh, let's 
Let's take another look at the code. Okay, eight miles per hour. And then uh, you can car script, uh, wheel position, braking, engine acceleration, torque, and all that. And then uh, car cam. I use a uh, Vector 3. And then I uh, write down, I move it in, I move the camera in the scene viewer and then I write I write down the the offset from zero and I just use that offset to uh, uh, let's see where is it current rotation current rotation oh, I'm using the smooth the smooth damp thing and transmit Euler angles plus the offset so yeah I'm sticking an offset in there and that's how I get the the camera to okay yeah there we go transposition equals game object find transposition plus offset and that's how I initially set the position of it and, and keep the camera looking sideways at it so uh, if you look at that and you can change this to where you want it to be you get the camera looking sideways and uh, and also moving with the mouse I can look up down side to side with the mouse and that helped me get it all set up so alright I'm gonna end this video hopefully that helped you you can you can pause on the video and get my code and stuff and alright later